Hey guys, welcome to another video on my channel, Hair Lish. You see, if you guys are new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe so that you can learn more about hair loss treatments in the pipelines and on hair transplant topics. Uh, a couple days ago, I actually did a video on the topic of dutasteride, one of the best hair loss treatment medication that's off label that's available right now. And we know dutasteride by its brand name Avidart. Dutasteride is another 5 alpha reductase inhibitor that blocks both type 1 and type 2 of the ISO enzymes of the 5 alpha reductase. Uh, type 1 is typically found in the skin and the hair follicles, and type 2 is found in the male genitalia and prostate as well as in the inner sheath of the hair follicles. And studies do show that 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride is much more potent than one milligram of finasteride due to its capability to reduce DHT serums by over 90%, where finasteride only reduces it about 70% of the serum DHT. So there's no doubt that dutasteride works far more superior in blocking more DHT, which leads to being a better hair loss treatment. However, dutasteride's half-life is anywhere from four to five weeks compared to finasteride's half-life, which is between five to eight hours. This means that a small percentage of users who experience side effects from finasteride may experience longer side effects from dutasteride because it stays in the system far longer than it does with finasteride. And so a small percentage of people um, from taking 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, both from finasteride and dutasteride, um, do suffer from side effects, anything ranging from sexual dysfunction, brain fog, and a lot of people are hesitant to take finasteride or dutasteride as a result, which would only speed up their hair loss since they're not taking anything to block the 5 alpha reductase. So many people would choose to take topical versions of hair loss medications because they tend not to go uh, into the system as much as oral medication and sometimes they would just localize in the scalp. So I was actually doing some research on dutasteride and I saw that a hair transplant clinic in Belgium actually sells topical dutasteride. And from previous research, I do know that they do sell topical versions of finasteride out in the market right now. One of them, which is in a clinic in, uh, in Canada. But I will talk about topicals in a, another video. Today I wanted to talk about something interesting that I came across. And it was a study in Spain regarding mesotherapy with dutasteride for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. Um, if you guys haven't heard of what mesotherapy is, mesotherapy involves a procedure where you have tiny injections of dutasteride which are administered into the mesodermal layer of the scalp. So pretty much it's kind of like PRP except for you are getting injections of dutasteride. Now, based on a clinical study, one milliliter of intradermal dutasteride, 0.01%, uh, Injections was administered for six months, which resulted in a total of three sessions. The group of people were injected every three months. The assessment of the response was done nine months after the first injection by three dermatologists. So a small study was done on five men and one woman. Uh, an improvement was observed in all cases with increased hair diameter and hair density and they actually did not have any adverse effects which were recorded during the treatment sessions and follow-up period. Now, the interesting thing is that lab tests showed no differences between serum hormone levels before and after the treatment. So this is great news since it means that unlike oral dutasteride or even topical dutasteride, this method of treatment regarding mesotherapy does not alter your hormones beyond the localized scalp DHT reduction. In addition, this only required injections to be performed uh, once every three months. And the thing that I wanted to add is that the study doesn't really clearly mention when they performed the lab test since if they did it after the nine months, it can be expected that there would be no systemic hormonal modification. But if they did do it after the six month mark, it doesn't mean that there weren't any systemic hormonal modification over the course of the treatments. It can just mean that at you know, at that point, there was no significant hormonal modification in comparison with before the treatment. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, even if it did go systemic and alter the hormones in the body, I don't think the effects would be nearly as strong as oral therapy. Or so the advantage of mesotherapy with dutasteride is that you can get high concentrations of dutasteride in the hair root. And as mentioned, the scientific studies of mesotherapy with dutasteride regarding the previous study where patients were injected the test right every three months had no traces of medication in blood tests um, and they did not detect any changes in sexual hormone levels. 
So it sounds really good, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at another study that involved mesotherapy using dutasteride. So on the contrary, other clinical trials compared mesotherapy of dutasteride containing solution with placebo. They did detect a moderate to significant improvement of hair, which is to be expected with dutasteride. And treatment schedule in all these studies involved intensive treatment sessions with weekly injections for the first month in all patients. So instead of getting it once every three months, this study involved people getting dutasteride injections every week. Uh, this would obviously be more costly as well as increase the possibility of dutasteride going uh, systemic into the body since they're literally getting injections every week versus getting injections once every three months like the first study. I don't think it would make sense to get weekly treatments since dutasteride has a half-life of anywhere from four to five weeks. But the trichogram analysis from one study did show that when dutasteride was used in combination with other vitamins, it resulted in better hair growth. Now this can most likely be explained by the multifactorial pathophysiology of androgenetic alopecia involving hair sensitivity to DHT and microinflammation. So a multi-therapeutic approach might seem to be more effective in terms of treating genetic hair loss. So here's an example of mesotherapy injections of pure dutasteride, uh, dutasteride 0.005% and polysorbate 80 in sodium chloride. And if you guys take a look, before and, and the after photo looks pretty good in terms of hair growth. But like I said, weekly injections can definitely increase side effects and it can go systemic. And that was a case for another study where systemic absorption took place and spermatogenesis did occur, although the decline was within the normal range. A decline in sperm concentration from 29 million per milliliter to 7 million per milliliter and a decline in sperm motility from 65% to 28% um, was still within normal range. But doctors do need to realize, uh, you know, as far as the dosage, because this shows that the weekly dutasteride injections actually had side effects and went systemic. So this also proves that you can't always rely on one source of data or a clinical trial since there's so many variables, as you guys can see here. Uh, at first, we thought that it didn't have any side effects, but if you were to get it every weekly, um, we did see some side effects. So as far as cost, we can only speculate since it wasn't really specified in any of the studies. But some people are taking a wild guess and they're saying that it might be similar to PRP injections. Um, obviously it's gonna be dependent on which clinic that you go to. But I actually did do some further research and reached out to some clinics in Europe. And the prices range anywhere from $50 to under $50 and even as much as $500 per session. Now, I personally don't think it's worth it since you can get generic Dutasteride for about $30, $40 from Costco or from CVS. But for those who do want to take Dutasteride with lower side effects, this might you know, be an option to take, but I don't know why people would do something like this. I hope this video was somewhat uh, interesting in terms of Dutasteride and going different routes to lower the side effects or at least not as much as it does when taking oral dutasteride. So for those who do want to take dutasteride but don't want it to go systemic or not as much as it does using oral medication, um, obviously depending on dosage and study and the frequency, this may be a viable option provided that you get a blood test done to monitor hormone levels but it's very expensive and if you do end up getting weekly injections, um, you know there are still side effects. And obviously more studies need to be conducted to establish protocols and evaluation of long-term dutasteride injections as well as figuring out exactly what dosage would keep the, uh, the medication localized into the scalp. But we do know that it comes with hormonal changes uh, when, especially when it comes to oral dutasteride since it is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor and uh, it is far more superior at suppressing DHT than it does with finasteride. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, let me know if you guys would consider taking something as injection, uh, whether it be finasteride or dutasteride. Um, like I said, in my opinion, I wouldn't. We have finasteride where I'm taking one milligram. I'm not having any side effects from that. So I'm good to go as far as right now. I'm taking minoxidil, um, a multivitamin supplement and also micro needling with minoxidil on the frontal portion of my scalp. For my next video, I don't know if you guys have noticed my beard. Um, it's been almost a week, so tomorrow I will be doing a video on my beard growth. But it's been about a week and I've been using Minoxidil. Um, I haven't used Dermaroller yet, I'm going to start using that for my second week. But just to give you guys a quick view 
This is how it looks. But stay tuned for tomorrow. I will have more information on that. Um, as always, thanks for all of your support. Um, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.